videos just based on the elasticities of demands. Uh, so I'm going to uh, look at every single one in an individual video, uh, try and make it short, but just go over um, how you calculate it, why you calculate it, and what you could do with the data. So when we're thinking about elasticity of demands, the first thing you need to remember is uh, we're looking at the responsiveness of the quantity demanded to whatever else is happening in the situation. And before you can do anything, you need to make sure that you know your percentage changes. So when you look at your percentage changes, try and be as consistent as possible uh, and try and keep it in the same way of, of calculating it. But what I would recommend is when you calculate the difference, do your new minus your original divide by your original. And the reason for that is because it will tell you the actual what's happened within the market. So for example, if quantity demanded has risen, then you should get a positive percentage change. If price has fallen, then you should get a negative percentage change. And you can see from the formula, so I mean, the first one that we're going to look at is price elasticity of demand. And straight away, you can see that it's the percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in price. So therefore, you're having to calculate two percentage changes before you can even carry out that formula. So make sure you know your percentage changes. And then make sure that you are, because you're not going to get a formula sheet in, um, in your exams. So you need to make sure you know the formulas off by heart. And, and what I tend to find is sometimes students will make that mistake as to which one goes first. Is it price? Is it quantity demanded? I, I think the, maybe the examiners kind of set you up for this. Um, because what you tend to find is when you read case studies, or you have the question, you have the price first, and then the quantity demanded, and you just automatically just go for the price because it's first. But obviously that's not the way. Uh, and one way of remembering it, it's a bit of a, a, bit of a strange one, uh, but I say it to all my classes, it's quite, it's quite common within economics. But imagine that you go into a public area, maybe it's a shopping centre, or let's say it's a cinema. So you go into the cinema, uh, there's a couple of films that are starting at a similar time, and you need the toilet. Now you've got two different situations, you've got, um, you've got if you're a male or you've got a female, all right? I do think males have it quite easy. They'll go straight in and uh, they'll be straight out. But females, you tend to have to queue, all right? So one way of remembering it is uh, females always queue before they pee. And by remembering it that way, you know that the percentage change of quantity demanded will always go on top and the percentage change in price will obviously always go below. So starting with price elasticity of demand. The first thing we need to think about is, um, let's have a look at that demand curve. And obviously that's very, very steep, uh, and that's because it's inelastic. But, but even if we're looking at an elastic one, which is flatter, the demand curve is always sloping downwards. And that is absolutely crucial. Uh, and the reason why it's crucial is because of that inverse relationship between price and the quantity demanded. So as price goes up, quantity demanded will go down. As price goes down, quantity demanded will go up. All right, so there's that inverse relationship so if you've got quantity demanded going up, you've got a positive percentage change. If you've got a uh, price going down, you've got a negative percentage change. So therefore your answer is always going to be negative. Now with this one, uh, and you can calculate it, uh, have a look at the, the data, um, but I've done it for you. Let's imagine that quantity demanded has gone up from two to three. So we do our three minus our two divided by two, and we've got a percentage change of 50%. It's positive because it's gone up. But the reason it's gone up is because the price has fallen, and it's fallen from $1.50 to $0.25, cents, which is quite a significant percentage change, so much so that it's at minus 83%, which is greater than the percentage change in quantity demanded, which straight away tells us we, we know it's going to be inelastic because the, 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 customers or the customers are not as responsive to that change in price for whatever reason. Could be their ability, could be their willingness. We'll, we'll delve into that in a minute. But what we'll get is we'll get a range between zero and minus one. Uh, and that'll tell us if it's inelastic. And as we can see here, it's minus 0 0.6. As it gets closer and closer to minus one, then it becomes uh, less and less inelastic. But again, I'll, I'll delve into that. So some of the reasons as to why it might be inelastic. I've got a couple uh, above me. So what we've got is maybe brand loyalty. If, if they're really, really loyal, and I, I do think that only goes so far. Um, I can imagine you, you may have loyalty, but it can be tested by the price. And if the price starts to rise and rise and rise, probably your loyalty starts to diminish. And if that's the case, it becomes more elastic. It might be because you're locked into a contract. I just got myself into a phone contract and then all of a sudden the iPhone 12 was released. 
I probably should have waited, but um, now I have to wait because I'm locked into a 24 month contract and I, and I can't get out of it, um, or not at the moment anyway. So even if I wanted to change, I'm not going to. I'm not going to be able to. It might be because there's a lack of information about changing. Um, again, recently, uh, well, recently I've been looking in my class with uh, the energy market, and before, I mean, I used to work at Npower when I just finished university, and um, I, I saw it for myself. Customers were just not really bothered about changing. They were, they, it was hassle, and. Uh, but one of the reasons was because they just didn't have the information. And nowadays with the internet and also the installation of smart uh, meters, you have much more information. And with that information, you can act on it and you can respond. So therefore, if, you, if you're looking at your smart meters and you're looking at your consumption and you're looking at the cost, and then you can just log online and go onto a price comparison website, then you know full well, I'm overspending here. Um, I'm just going to go somewhere else and you're going to become much more elastic. But before all that happened, and there's still markets that don't really have necessarily those websites set up, um, you can imagine that without the information, it's going to be an elastic. Sometimes it's habit, and I'm going to, I'm going to delve into that now. So uh, when we talk about habit, it's probably a little bit stronger example, but addiction. So when we're looking at price elasticity demand and we're looking at habitual behavior, you can look at it from the point of view of um, you might you might want to to um, respond, but actually you're not able to because you're fighting that addiction. And with cigarettes and the price of cigarettes, they continue to rise. They continue to rise because of tax. Uh, government keep putting tax on tax. I think ta I think actually the price of a cigarette, seventy five percent of it is actually tax from the government. Uh, and the cigarette producers are aware that people who are smoking they are going to be most likely addicted. And in that case, they just shove the cost, pass the cost straight onto the customer and the customer will buy it. So it's not really having the impact that the government wants um, because of the inelastic nature of cigarettes. It might not be as strong as addiction. It might be just simply you don't want to break your habits and you don't mind if the percentage change isn't having that much of an impact on, on your disposable income. Uh, but other factors, again, as I mentioned before, it could be the inconveniency or inconvenience, sorry, or the difficulty of switching. I might not be having that information. It might be actually because it's a necessity. And what I mean by necessity is that it could be a commodity, and that commodity could be absolutely essential for producing a good. And there might be a lack of alternatives. So if you want to produce that good, you are obviously very dependent, and there's that derived demand for, for whatever the commodity might be. And therefore, even if the price of that commodity rises, and let's face it, commodity prices, they do fluctuate quite a lot. If it does increase, you might be forced to buy it. Yes, the quantity demand they might slightly fall because you might get these firms that can no longer afford to produce the good, especially if that good is elastic in itself. Then they might they might struggle, but the majority of producers will want will need that that uh, commodity to be able to produce their goods, and therefore that makes the actual commodity itself possibly inelastic. And, and again, in terms of that loyalty, but I think as I said before, probably only goes so far. Right. Okay. So let's have a look at elastic. You can see it's um, it's much flatter compared to the other one. It's still inverse. Price goes down. Quantity demand still rises. Price goes up. Quantity demand still falls. But this time, the percentage changes are going to be different because as we can see, and you don't need to do any calculations to see this, I'll just kind of get out of the way a little bit, we can see the percentage change will be much greater for the quantity demanded than it will be for the price, meaning it's much more responsive. Again, I've done the calculations for you. You can always pause the video and do it yourself, but what we've got, 6 minus 2 divided by 2 equals 200% because we're looking at it from the perspective that price has gone down. And price was one dollar. It's gone down to eighty cents. So we've got a, a minus twenty percent uh, price change in terms of percentage. Do your two hundred percent divided by your minus twenty percent, and you get minus ten. And, and you can see that that two hundred percent change in quantity demanded is so much more significant than the change in price. So it's so much more responsive. 
and therefore it's, it's going to be less than minus one. So in other words, minus 10 is very, very elastic. All right? It's ridiculously elastic. So if we get from minus one to minus two to minus 2.5 or whatever it might be, it's becoming more and more elastic. Now, some of the reasons, uh, it, it could be down to substitutes, as we can see with the chocolate bar. Um, you might be very, very passionate about Mars bar. You might love Mars bar. But if you get to a point where it's going up in price, and you just look around you, even at eye level, you can see so many different substitutes. And you begin to just think, well, what's the point? I'll just switch. It might also be to do with information. Like I said, compare the market uh, with insurance companies. You can, you can pretty much, before you commit to uh, insurance or at the end of every annual contract every year, uh, you might think, okay, I've been with this company, but let's have a look what's out there. And compare the market will do it for you. It might be to do with the initial cost. And what I mean by the initial cost is, let's imagine you've got two different consumer goods. You've got penny sweets and you've got a car. There's clearly a difference between them. A car is very, very expensive, especially for, for the majority of the population. And they may have saved for that car. And then all of a sudden the car goes up in price. It might get to the point where actually they're just not willing to spend, for example, an extra grand on a car and they'll just go and switch to another car. Um, Again, the substitutes obviously with a, with a car, but what I'm what I'm getting at is if the initial cost is already quite expensive, they might not be willing to even entertain a price change. But with a penny suite, you, you might look at it from the point of view of it's so cheap anyway. It's it's pretty much pocket money. Um, it's it's pennies. So if even if um there's a, a much bigger percentage change in the price of penny suites compared to a car. Actually, the price change in penny sweets is not going to have any impact really on your disposable income by much. All right, so therefore it might make it more elastic. So as I've said here, as we can see by this street, which is lit up by takeaways, lots of substitutes. Um, the more substitutes you've got, the more customer choice and therefore the more responsive they can be. The ease of switching. So if you're not, for example, I'm locked into a phone contract, but if you're on pay as you go, you can easily change um, the initial price itself, as I mentioned before, if it's cheap, it might make it more elastic and the available information. So all of that information will will pretty much help you to understand or determine as to whether it's, el it's elastic or inelastic. Okay. All right.